Okay, so this is the agenda for this uh, tutorial session. So we will uh, first uh, discuss the objective of this uh, having this session, and uh, then uh, I'll explain the use case we are going to implement. So before uh, trying to implement the use case, uh, we will uh, give you some uh, uh, introduction and fundamentals of uh, WC2 Enterprise Integrator, uh, and uh, and uh, and then. Uh, follow up with the solution architecture, then we will move on to the implementation and finally we can conclude with some, a Q&A session. So the objective of this session is to uh, understand the fundamentals of enterprise integrator. So in uh, the last session we looked at some of the features of enterprise integrator, now we are going more deep into the uh, theoretical stuff and get some understanding and then we are going to learn how to build a end-to-end uh, -end application and end-to-end -end integration scenario with WS2 Enterprise Integrator product. Okay, so uh, first let's, let me explain the use case we are building today. So this is actually a real world use case. Uh, so it, it's about online vehicle revenue license system. So in some countries like Sri Lanka, uh, we need to obtain a revenue license to drive a motor vehicle in roads. So to obtain a revenue license, we need, the vehicle needs to have a valid insurance certificate and also uh, it needs to have a valid emission test certificate. Emission test certificate means uh, the vehicle has to be tested and verified uh, saying that it is eco-friendly. And uh, there's already systems available to do this stuff, like uh, there's a license issuer system which does things manually. So those systems are not integrated. So if somebody wants to take a revenue license, first uh, he needs to go to the uh, insurance uh, uh, issuing party and take an insurance and then uh, go to the emission test uh, uh, parties and take a emission test certificate and then having those two they need to go into the license issuing authority and spend a half a, half a day there to obtain their license. So, so here what we are going to do is we are going to do a digital transformation and introduce a new system which uh, people can easily obtain their revenue license online. So of course we need to integrate with a payment gateway to make the payment. So that's the scenario we are going to implement today. Okay, so before going into the implementation, I will briefly explain some of the fundamentals of Enterprise Integrator. So let's start with the high level message flow. So on the left, we have the application. So let's think of it as uh, the client application. So the client sends some message into the, the enterprise integrator. So enterprise integrator has a layered architecture. So when the client send a message, it will first get dispatched into a layer called transport layer. So the transport layer is taking care of converting the wire level message into, the, into some kind of an object representable in the mediation engine, so which we call as a message context. So the, the task of transport uh, layer is to convert the wire level message into the message context. So once the message context is created, then it is passed to another layer called the quality of service layer. So at there, the quality of service aspect like security, the message level security get resolved. So once the quality of service aspects are resolved, the plain message context is passed to the mediation engine. So in the mediation engine, we do whatever the uh, mediation stuff. We do routing, uh, orchestration, transformation, all those stuff are happen at the mediation engine. Then, uh, when we are delivering a message to some kind of a backend service, we go through the same set of layers. So if you want to apply 
things like message level security. First, it, it will go through the quality of service layer and the message sec uh, level security get applied and then it will hand it over to the transport layer. In the transport layer actually divided into two parts. On the left, uh, we have something called transport listeners, which convert the wire level message into the message context. And on the right, we have transport senders. It does the reverse. So basically, it converts the message context into the wire level format. And from the transport sender, the message is delivered to the, the backend service or the backend application. So here is the uh, the high level message flow inside the ESP. So now let's look at what are the basic uh, the building blocks in uh, ESB. So if we want to do something to a message, uh, we need to get the help of some unit called mediator. Mediator is the basic unit of message processing in ESB. So if you want to do some kind of a transformation, routing, so anything has to be done using these mediators. Uh, let's assume mediator like a black box where you get some kind of an input message based on some configuration, it converts the input message into the output message. Okay? So when we are building these kind of integration scenarios, we often need to do multiple things to the message. Like we have to do transformation, we have to do routing, we have to do some kind of other uh, payload alteration to the same message. So we can't simply use single mediator for those kind of scenarios. So we need to take help from multiple mediators. So we need to align set of mediators, a series of mediators in a pipeline. When we align series of mediators in a pipeline, we get a sequence. So sequence is a set of mediators aligned in a pipeline. Okay? So to represent the, the backend service or the actual service, we need to have some entity within the ESB configuration. So that entity is called the endpoints. So endpoint is a, a logical representation for the actual backend service. I already talked about the transport uh, layer. So those are the uh, building blocks we have in uh, ESP. Okay. So now let's see how we can trigger messages, how we can get in messages into this ESP engine. So there are mainly four ways, proxy services, APIs, inbound endpoints, and task. So let's look at each of these stuff. So first we have proxy service. A proxy service is, is actually a virtual service hosted in ESP. So if you want to build some kind of an integration scenario and, uh, and do some kind of a mediation logic, we need to create a proxy service and uh, put those different kind of mediators in it. So a proxy service is kind of a virtual service available in the ESP runtime. So here we have a, a service on the right and we have client. So we are creating a proxy service to expose a new service interface to the client. Okay, so the, the, the proxy services which uh, I talked about can handle any kind of uh, transports, like uh, any kind of uh, uh, wire level protocols, like HTTP, file, uh, JMS, any kind of protocols can be handled at the proxy service. But there's a uh, we introduce uh, a specific uh, construct called APIs for RESTful integration. So the, for RESTful integration, uh, only, uh, we only support HTTP transport. So this has all the uh, RESTful concept built into the artifact type. So, so uh, this is, a re, uh, this is uh, introduced uh, after the proxy services concept, which makes the life of the RESTful uh, integrator uh, a better one. So next we have the inbound endpoint concept. So the proxy services and APIs, which I talked about, can uh, configure some set of configurations to do some kind of a, a mediation logic inside. 
but there are some limitations. Say for example, if you want to open up a new port using the, uh, the mediation services, the proxy services and API does not provide that capability. But this inbound endpoint uh, provide that extra uh, configurable properties so that you can dynamically configure these stuff uh, anytime. So without doing a restart of the server, you can simply spawn up, you can simply start a new uh, HTTP port using this inbound concept. So there are two types of uh, inbound endpoints, uh, the listening end inbound endpoint and the polling end inbound endpoint. Listening inbound endpoint means the listeners like HTTP, protocols like uh, HTTP belongs to the listening type. And uh, say for example, the file inbound, where we uh, poll a particular directory periodically belongs to the polling inbound category. Okay, so all these uh, three types I talked about, uh, proxy services, APIs, and inbound endpoints, are triggered from an external party. So there has to be a client who is initiating the process. But let's say we need to uh, invoke a mediation uh, logic uh, every day midnight without getting help of a client. If we want to trigger something every day midnight, there should be a way. So that is done using this concept of task. So by using a, a scheduled task, we can configure ESB to trigger some mediation logic uh, in a given time period. Okay? So those are the four different uh, ways a message can get into the ESB runtime. Okay, so that's about the ESB fundamentals I uh, plan to discuss. Now let's uh, see the data services fundamentals. So basically this uh, data services or data integration capabilities can be used to expose any kind of data source as a service to the, the outside. So this is the process. So first we need to define a data uh, service and then we need to link the data service with the actual data source. So that is what is meant by add data sources. So by configuring the data source, we can link to the uh, some kind of a data source like a database. So you need to give the, all the parameters like the connection URL, credentials, all those stuff has to be configured at, while adding the data sources. So we configured uh, to connect with the data source. Now we need to have a way to fetch data from the data store. That, for that, we have to write a query. For databases, we can write a, a SQL query and fetch data. So now we, we have fetched the data. Now there should be a way to expose it as a service or a RESTful API. So that is done using uh, the last two steps. Either you can create an operation to expose a SOAP, uh, service, or else you can create a REST resource to expose a RESTful API from the fetch data. So this is the data services creation process. Okay, so we talked about how we can create this artifact and now let's see how we can deploy it. So to create this artifact, we have a tool called uh, the Developer Studio or the Enterprise Integrator Tooling, so which is basically a Eclipse-based uh, development tool uh, we have developed. So basically developers are interacting with this uh, Eclipse-based uh, tooling to create different kind of artifact, product artifact like proxy services, data services. And once these artifacts are created, we need to create a deployable archive or, or a car file to get those artifacts deployed into the actual server runtime. So we develop the artifact using the developer studio and then we wrap them using a car file and then we can deploy those car files into the actual server runtime. So that is the application creation and uh, the deployment process. Okay, so now let's see uh, how we can implement the scenario we talked about. So here's how we can map WSO2 products with the, the scenario we are going to implement. So we already have uh, 
systems, uh, mostly the legacy system exists for insurance system and uh, emission test system and the license issuer system. So, those systems has a, a database uh, to store data related to these different kind of uh, operations. So, these systems are based on some, uh, some uh, different areas. So, basically to integrate these uh, different kind of systems, first we need to expose those databases as services. Then only the other parties can interact with them. For that, we have used enterprise uh, integrator data services capabilities. So, here we have built three different uh, services called insurance service, emission service and the license issuer service. So, those are actually uh, data services which expose these uh, databases in these legacy systems as services. And to orchestrate these different kind of data services, we are using the ESB capability of the enterprise integrator. So, that is uh, done by this license service. So, the license service is going to be a service built using uh, the enterprise, enterprise service bus capabilities. So, it is connecting with all these different kind of uh, services and also with the payment gateway. So, what we are building here as a service is not a managed API. So, if we, so we are going to use WS2 API manager product to make the license service a managed API so that any application, any mobile application or any kind of web application can consume that service. Okay, so, this is the, uh, the overview of the solution architecture. So, now uh, let me hand over to Varuna so, he the, uh, so that he can continue with the implementation part. Uh, good afternoon. So, I am Varuna. So, uh, let us uh, go look at what we are going to do today. Uh, we uh, actually thought of uh, breaking our demo into two parts. First thing would be like uh, the actual demo where we have our, where we showed you in our solutions architecture diagram where we are connecting to different systems and integrating together them in the in the enterprise integrator and uh, front it with WS2 API manager where it's act as a managed API platform. Uh, but uh, in also to show you how actual developer develop this system, this kind of a uh, scenario, we just extract a small part of it. Uh, so we are going to show you how to develop it. Uh, not a hands-on session, but uh, from uh, the beginning, create a small part of the service and how to deploy and see how it works. So, uh, first of all, so uh, let me uh, show you uh, what we are going to do on this. Uh, so, first thing would be, let me close all these things. Now, from our uh, solution architecture do document, we have like three data services. So, I am going to take one data service out and show you how we can fetch the data and do some small transformation within it and send a result back. To begin with, let's see our database structure. So, here what I am going to do is, I have a table called emission records. Uh, so, I have some sample records over there. So, what I am going to do is, I am going to query this table, get those information out. But to query this table, I am going to pass. Uh, so, I am assuming that uh, for a particular vehicle, there can be uh, for a particular license plate, there can be only one emission record at a given time. So, I am going to pass a uh, license plate to my service and fetch this record back. Uh, other thing would be, 
I am uh, going to pass a JSON message. So uh, I am going to pass a JSON mes sorry uh, JSON message like this to my uh, enterprise integrator service and extract it and get this data service back. So let's start. So this is uh, WSO2 Developer Studio, which is our tooling utility that you can use for develop WSO2 specific configurations. So uh, I already have uh, developed my entire ESP project that we are going to demonstrate to today. So uh, to uh, develop our small example, let's create a new project. So let me go to our developer studio dashboard. Uh, one small detail, the developer studio is a plugin built on top of, of Eclipse, the famous Eclipse IDE. So it's a plugin based on Eclipse. So first thing, so my uh, uh, objective is to uh, fetch that information from the database. So what I'm going to do is, uh, you will see under data services server, I'm going to create a data service project. So let me name it like emission service demo, demo data service. I'm just putting DS as data service. So I'm going to do, click a finish. So you will see my data service project is created. So for to the next part, so I'm going to right click and create a new data service. So under my data service project, so this would be my data ser service. So let's create new data service. First thing would be, uh, what's the name of my actual data service? So I would say emission demo service, something like this. So I wouldn't care about any other things. I would just click next, then it would ask me to uh, ask me to enter what what is the actual database that I'm going to connect to. So I'm just to uh, I will just uh, create a data source ID. Uh, e M M D S something like this. So I was a bit lazy, so I just saved all the information, database URLs and everything, just to save a bit of time. So let me just copy these values over here. So, okay, and I'm, uh, mind me with this silly password, so root and path. So we are done. So let's see what actually created. So if you see, we, we see the basic configuration is created over here. So now what's the first thing? Uh, we, we have our configurations of our intended data source. Uh, we need a query, SQL query. Uh, okay, sorry. So this is, uh, so I'm going to add a query. So uh, let me just give a query ID, something like one, just for easiness, let me save it. And once I right click on query, I'm going to add a SQL. Again, just I had my query saved. So my query would be, uh, sorry, very simple thing. Uh, so just select all the records from emission records table where license plate ID would be a parameter I would be passing. So that's a query. So then what, I, what do I need? So I'm saying this guy, okay, I'm going to pass you a parameter. So we have to do a input mapping where whatever the uh, person who makes a request has to pass an input parameter. So 
uh, I'm going to pass the license plate here. So I'm going to pass the input type. Uh, I'm not going to worry about those things. So that I'm done there. Then other thing would be output mapping because the database server will give me back results. So I, I need them. Uh, I need to organize them. What are the output types? What are the parameters? So I would say I would get it as re just sim record. So I'm going it as a collection of records. So I'm uh, just saying it uh, record. So under that, I'm going to do my actual output mapping. So it would be a column, output field name. I am not going to worry about, uh, I mean, changing any names for the moment. So data source column, let me again quickly show you back, which are my five columns, basically ID, status, uh, expiry date, license plate, and SSN. So let me uh, create these uh, mappings. So ID would be an integer. So uh, it would be type scalar. So fine, I'm going to save that. And let me add the next thing. So status. Again, it should be my database column status. It would be a string. I'm going to save it. And the third element, I'm going to add expiry date. I hope my spellings are correct at the moment. Uh, so it would be again expiry date. Data source type is again column. This would be a date field. OK, I'm going to save it. And I have two more to add. Other thing would be license and plate. Uh, it would be a string again, and last thing. Uh, last thing would be the SSA. So I'm going to save it. So up to now, uh, I did my query, input mapping and output mapping. So now this data service is going to expose to the outside world. So, so uh, it's a, it would be a, a web service. We can exp, uh, expose it as, as a REST service as well. So uh, in this case, we need some operation to somebody in the outside to call into. So uh, because there can be multiple operations. So I'm just going to, uh, so these are my records, add an operation. So operation would be simple one. Let's say get uh, get emission uh, record. So this would be something simple. Then under that, I am going to tell him okay. It's or by default selected because uh, we had only one query. So this is the basic thing. So let me just show you what we have created so far. So if you look through this, this is uh, this configuration. Uh, you will see we have created the query and input mapping, the uh, result element output mapping. Uh, finally, the operation that we are going to call to. So we have created our data service. So now we need need to deploy it into our enterprise integrator to work. So uh, Isuru earlier mentioned something about composite applications. So what we are going to do next is create a composite application. So it could be under distribution. So let me name it demo composite app. OK. So I would select this guy. Because I, I won't 
composite app to have this emission service. So I am going to do just finish. Now I want this uh, 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 deployable archive. So how I am going to do that? So I'm going to right click here. I would say I'm going to export it. Uh, let me show it again. Uh, so this is the option that I'm going to select. Export composite application project. So let me give a destination. So uh, I'm going to my folder, which I have already created. So it will again, again here it will ask me, uh, what do I need? OK. So let me go to the demo folder now. So you will see this one is created. So next step would be how we, how we can deploy this into enterprise integrator. So let's try to do that, hoping that we have correctly uh, developed our data service. So at the moment, I have uh, up and running my servers. Uh, so this guy is the enterprise integrator. See, I, I, I'm using enterprise integrator 6.2.0 version. So let's log in into the console. So this is the carbon console. I think probably I have been logged out by the moment. So I'm logging in. Then there is something called carbon applications. Let's see, we don't have anything at the moment. So let me try to add this thing. Okay, let's browse and select this one and upload. So it will take some time. Why, while it takes time, let us show what's happening in the back end. So this is the back end actually. So let's see. Do you see the new line? It said uh, successfully deployed carbon application. So it means it should work now. So let's go back. So we created uh, under the services. Let's see what we have. OK, here we go. We have our emission demo service. So uh, let's try to send a request to this. So I'm just getting the whistle out of this. And I'm using SOAP UI, which is a popular tool among web service developers. So let me create a new SOAP project. I'm not going to worry about other things. OK. So let's try to send a request, actually. So let me just copy a license plate ID here. Uh, and let's go back to, OK, let's see what happens. OK, here we have our results. So basically, uh, so uh, we were just sending a simple uh, query parameter. So the enterpri enterprise integrated data service sent me the results back. So as the next step, uh, what we're going to do is, so this is just a simple service. We are going to develop a REST full API in the enterprise integrator. Within that REST API, we are going to call this particular service. So that would be a day-to-day -day service that you are uh, encountering in your development scenario, inter integrating certain backends. So we, we are going to use this as a backend, develop a REST API, do some other operations. So let's get on to that part now. So next thing would be our ESB project, so uh, Enterprise Service Bus Configuration Project. So if you see this menu under Enterprise Service Bus, we have several things. So I'm going to uh, create a new ESB config project. So let me name it uh, Emission Demo. ESB. So, so that's my project. So project is created. So now in this uh, project, 
uh, I am going to call certain endpoints. This, the earlier endpoint that we created, uh, I am going to use it. So I am going to create an endpoint first within my ESP project. So this is the first thing I am going to. So uh, let me, sorry. Let me create as addition endpoint. So what would be the address? So I'll just go to SOAP UI. Uh, I would copy my, sorry. Endpoint address. So uh, let me show you actually, even I though got it from the so QY component, you would see if I click on this, so these are the endpoints. So one is HTTPS endpoint, other one is the HTTP endpoint. So I have my endpoint, uh, sorry. I'm going to save it. Okay, endpoint is saved. So uh, next thing is, I'm going to create our REST API. So I'm going to create a REST API. Uh, let's name it Emission API just for the simplicity. So let me create a API context. So that would be the mapped when there is a re request, API context would be the first thing. It acts as API identifier in that particular scenario. So uh, let's say, let's just use emission uh, as the context. Click finish. So we have our API. So the, in APIs, uh, if you are familiar with APIs, we have a concept called API resources. Within API, there can be either single or multiple resources, which supports either uh, particular HTTP verb or multiple HTTP verbs. So if I click on this resource, uh, I'm going to use uh, some URL mapping. Uh, so let's say um, get plate or something. Uh, let's say, uh, let's do it like uh, status for simplicity. What's the status of this thing? So I'm going to, uh, that's the URL mapping. And under the HTTP methods, I'm going to make it a post, HTTP post, because I'm willing to pass a payload. So I'm going to save it. So first thing, so this is where, what we are going to use the mediators, which, uh, Isuru described you guys earlier. So uh, now, if you guys remember, at the beginning I was telling you about this JSON payload. So I need to use this in my ESP project, ESP API basically. So I want to extract that value. So we have something called uh, one of the pretty basic mediators that we have in the ESP, a property mediator. So just uh, consider it as, a, it as a variable in program. So let's just give a description to this guy. I would say uh, license plate extracted, something like this. So this is the description, but not the name. So my name would be license plate underscore, I would just say property, just to keep it as a property. Uh, then, so in a property, as in a variable value, I'm going to select it as expression, because I'm going to uh, get the input value, incoming value. So uh, this might, at this moment, when I'm doing this property expression, this might seem a little bit strange to you if you are not familiar with ESP 
is be configuration la language but don't worry these everything are available within our documentation this synapse uh, xpath extensions and how to uh, extract values uh, what whatever the things that we need to develop in day to day so uh, at the moment uh, i am going to do something like this uh, this is a way to extract a json value which is incoming so uh, if you remember my key value would be license plate so i'm just going to extract this value from the incoming message uh, so i need so it should be dollar dot then the parameter so if for example if we had uh, multiple paths we could have gone like license plate dot something like that so let me save that for the moment. And um, let's add some more little more thing. The other very basic thing, let's add a log mediator. Log mediator helps you basically to debugging capabilities in the very basic level. Because uh, if you put a log, you can see the console output and see what happened, what happened. So I would uh, recommend you then and there just put the logs uh, because later you can change the log level so you won't get everything in the logs but so let's put a log uh, like uh, print uh, sorry print plate something like this so now uh, I'm going to uh, make it custom and uh, I want to print out something. So custom property I'm going to define inside it. Plate. Again, it would be an expression. So I'm going to, uh, I have defined, uh, I am going to use the same thing, JSON eval, again use here, just to print, this guy out, license plate. So, so far we extracted the ID. Now we need to send it to this endpoint, the DS, uh, data service endpoint that we talked about. So how do we do that? Uh, for, to send it, we need this particular payload, right? So uh, how do we send a payload is that we have something called Payload factory, again, which uh, Isuru mentioned earlier, payload factory. So uh, this is this would be the EMM payload. So here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just simply go there, copy this guy, and put over here. But this plate ID is hard, it would be hard coded, so I need to pass it a, as an argument, the one we extracted. And there is a tab for arguments. So in the I'm going to add an argument. So it would be an expression. So what the expression would be? I earlier defined a property to extract that value. I'm use, going to use that property. So again, this is. Uh, something in the ESP language, this $CTX that I'm going to use. Don't worry about this. This is something that you will get familiar when you start using this. So as far as I remember, my property was license plate underscore prop. Uh, sorry, prop. So, so far I'm good. Then there is a one more thing. So. I'm going to send a SOAP envelope. It's a SOAP 1.2. So the incoming message was a JSON. So DSS, I'm sending a SOAP envelope. So I'm going to say, OK, here, ESB, look. I need you to send it as a SOAP envelope. So how, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a, another property here. Uh, under the property name, I am select. There, these are predefined. 
ones that we can use inside the ESB, it would be the message type. So message type, I am going to use it, the SOAP12 binding message type application SOAP XML. So this would be my uh, message type. Now we have uh, prepared our payload. Now I need to send it to this DSS service. So we have few mediators that we can send messages out. The default one would be send mediator. Uh, here I'm going to use a call mediator because if you use a send mediator, so the flow will be end there. So it will come to the outflow. The response will come to the outflow. So if uh, let, uh, in uh, practical use case, you will have multiple calls in the same flow that you need to do. So in this case, we are going to use call mediator, which will call endpoint, get a res response back, so you can continue the same flow. So this is my call mediator. So this, so to whom I'm going to call? That's where this comes in. Emission endpoint. I'm going to call this guy. So this will ideally should send me a response back. Let's try whether we are getting a response back. Okay, so let's try to, uh, so up to now we have developed uh, this part. So uh, let's try to uh, deploy this first and try to uh, see whether this works. So it would be easy for us. Uh, let's uh, see the source as well, just for the moment. I mean, to see what we have done so far. We have created a post uh, HTTP word resource with uh, this URL mapping, uh, this emission status, etc. So uh, actually this was good because I identified that in the URL mapping I have done a small mistake. So this should have been there. So uh, uh, let's try to now deploy this. So in the demo composite app, I'm again try going to export this thing. So it will show me the next thing, ES, emission demo ESP project. So I'm going to select that as and well this time. So it asked me, yes, I would say yes, go on. Uh, and here uh, we have this composite app. Let's try to redeploy this guy into our ESP. So I'm going to, okay, we have this. I'm going to add it again. Browse. Okay, fine. So let's see what happens in the back end. So yes, it's deployed. So now let's uh, check what has happened over there. So we deployed a new API. So let's click on the API. So we have this emission API. So let's get this one. I have my Postman. So sorry. And as I remember, it was status. So let's try and see. OK. So now we sent a message to our ESP API and got a response back. So uh, we sent our JSON, got a response back. Uh, so we are good up to that point. So let me quickly try to. Uh, uh, implement our next thing. Uh, my uh, target was to show you how to uh, implement our file connector over here. Let's try to save whatever the output that we are getting from here to a file and see how it works. So 
since I have already uh, used file me file connector here, it's in my uh, ESP project space. So what do we need uh, to write to a file? We need uh, two basic things, file name and some content. So uh, let me create some two properties for this. So I am doing, uh, mind you, I am doing it in, in between the call, uh, call mediator and the response. So because the call mediator responded, now I am going to use that. So property name, uh, let me just say simply, for the simplicity, just name. And file name, let me use an expression for the file name because we need file name to be unique because it, it would be like a, it would be different. This message can be different each time. So it, let me uh, use uh, this expression. This is again ESB uh, supported uh, expression for string concatenation. So uh, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm just getting the timestamp. We can get the timestamp within the ESB, the system time, and make it as my file name. So I have my file name. Then next thing I would need is the file content. So let me just drag over there a bit. So again, property name, I would just simply say content. Uh, again, value type expression. This time, I am going to get the value from this SOAP envelope. Again, uh, there are multiple ways that we can get a value out of a SOAP envelope. I'm going to use this uh, in uh, dot dollar uh, env. Again, this is in the documentation. So I'm going to use it to get the body out. Okay, now, now I have two properties. So the next thing would be, let's try with our connector. File connector is already in my space. So I'm going to create a file. Uh, the source, source would be the file name. So this is the standard way within curly brackets you can use $ctx means I'm going to get the property name. It would be simply name. The in, uh, then input content, again dollar CTX means from the context, content. So this would be basically uh, the file operation. Let's just quickly look, uh, look through the source. So you will see after this call. Uh, so this will give you a better idea. After the call, we are extracting the values to properties then try to write to a file system. So now, before we deploy it again, we use file connectors. So we need to, uh, file connectors are uh, not default. Those binary, uh, those jars are not default, uh, sits within the ESP. So we have whatever the file connector that we are going to use, we have to upload them to the integrator. So. Let me create a file connector project as well. Uh, so, connector export project. Uh, let me, just for the simplicity, emission connector. Finished. So, here is my emission connector, and I'm going to add the file connector that I'm really going to use, basically upload into ESP. So I have my file connector downloaded from the WSO2 connector store. So finish. So uh, let's try to 
again export. Uh, so let's try to add this guy. And important uh, API is already created. Yes, so it's already there. Now let's go to ESB. Again, try to add this same thing. So let's see whether uh, maybe if we do something wrong, it can be go wrong in uh, backend level. Let's see what backend level says. So it says it uh, successfully deployed. So file location, this is uh, not this one. This is the file location that we gave in. Uh, if you remember, uh, basically, uh, this is the file location I gave in demo. So let's try to send a request once more. Okay, we got a success true. That means, uh, so I, uh, because now we wrote the original message to a file, this message is coming from file connect out result. So this is coming, the, you might wonder why my record didn't come this time. Because we use that original uh, message that came out from call mediator to write to a file, and we are get, given the actual output from the file, right? So let's see what's in this file. Uh, so we see now new file is created. If we open up, you see this our SOAP message, uh, which is returned from the DSS service, is returned to the file. So this is basically. Uh, what we uh, uh, try to demonstrate at, as a practical session. So uh, let me show you uh, other part that we have developed. So these are the things. Let me just close them down for the moment uh, for the t simplicity. So I don't need this. So this is my other project that I, I developed. Uh, so here, what I did was, uh, let me show you. Uh, basically, uh, I had a proxy service created. So if you see, it has some uh, uh, lengthy uh, uh, configuration. So basically, what I, I will explain in a brief. Uh, what I was doing was I, I was expecting a SOAP message in this case, which would be sent me from the API manager, then extract all these parameters, first send to my emission endpoint, then get the status of emission, because status is uh, important for my decision making, use a filter mediator. Filter is a basic if else in the WSO2 world. So do some uh, operations based on that, uh, so forth. And finally, uh, doing uh, call some other services. So you will see uh, multiple call mediators in this service. And again, uh, calling multiple endpoints, create, uh, create the file. And one more thing, if you see, I have used a, a Gmail connector here. So Gmail connector I used uh, to demonstra demonstrate uh, the importance of uh, connectors. Because in previously, we could send the emails, but it was a bit uh, lengthier process. But with connectors, we can uh, connect to uh, the Gmail APIs, use uh, the security and everything, uh, use those things. So this, this was the. API I was I created for this purpose. So I had uh, my composite application created for this thing. And uh, let's try to uh, deploy this composite application and uh, see what happens. So uh, this is my composite applications application. Let's just 
prepare the backend log. Uh, okay. Uh, before I am, uh, I am going to show you the demo. Let me just show you one thing quickly. If you guys remember, I added a log mediator in my uh, API, ERP API. So it is printed over there. So you can see with log mediators wh what is going on. So uh, I am having uh, everything deployed. So the next thing would be. Uh, so I'm not going to directly call to the ESB service. So uh, let me get my API store. So uh, as uh, Isuru suggested, uh, let me uh, show you a bit more on this project. So uh, basically, uh, this is uh, ESP part where we have the endpoints defined and everything and this is the data services project where actually we have created three data services for our uh, three data uh, tables so, uh, these are the three tables actually that i have created uh, one for emission one for, because i use three databases uh, even though we don't have three uh, vendors three different vendors just to simulate that i i created three databases so uh, the end information would be saved in the license database. So uh, the flow would be, first it would get the records from the emissions database, check the validity, go there, then check the insurance database. Finally, if everything matches, the all our validations matches, it would go in the license database and uh, store the information of the new license. So, so far, we don't have uh, any data over there. So, other thing would be, uh, I have created an API. Uh, this is called, uh, I created something called License Renewal API. So, we are not going to directly call the Enterprise Integrator. What I'm going to do is send this JSON to the API manager, uh, hosted API. There, we did a small thing because uh, just to show you the capabilities. So, uh, in this case, my e enterprise integrator was expecting a SOAP message, but API message receives the JSON. So, uh, we developed uh, something like this. Let me show you what we did in the API publisher portal. Uh, if I go to edit, uh, so this is my basic API configuration. Uh, so here, in the inflow, I am adding a mediation. So in the API manager itself, we can do some mediation logic. So I am using JSON to SOAP conversation inside the API manager, which will then re uh, send it to the enterprise integrator. So this is. Um, how my API was created. So uh, basically, let me quickly show you. This is basically my uh, uh, con conversion uh, configuration, just getting everything from the JSON. If you see the things we used during the demo, uh, JSON eval, get every request, and just do a simple uh, payload factory, create this uh, SOAP envelope, and sending it. So now this thing is created. So let's try to send a request from the postman. Um, uh, so this would be the body. Uh, so let's try to send a request. OK, we got a successful message. So what happened? Basically, it queried the databases, uh, two databases, emission and uh, insurance and added a record to the license uh, within. So you will see a new record is added over there. Let's take other things as well. So basically, uh, sorry, not this one. So this is where I created some, uh, I created some kind of a transaction record for file writing. And let's see whether we have received the email. 
okay we have received the email as well so uh, this was done using that gmail connector so uh, other thing other important thing would be uh, i just uh, integrated api analytics to this as well my api analytics was, server was running uh, this this was my api analytics server so uh, api manager was publishing information to this analytics server the importance of analytics server would be that to make business level decisions to see what's going in your systems this should be really useful so let's just see the basic level of analytics we should have uh, just something like this api usage uh, who are the top users basically i had only one user resource usage so this kind of information that you can get you can uh, do more things than that but this is a so basic thing in summary what we tried was uh, get a simple use case and try to show you how to actually develop it uh, but don't worry about the the developer studio today i used only the ui uh, capabilities but when you are familiar with you can quickly even just type the configurations once you are familiar and did this part and showed you the uh, developed uh, use case how we can uh, solve our license uh, renewal program problem so uh, uh, thanks for that so do you have any questions isuru Yes. Via Gmail, is it fair? Is it fair to assume that we can do any any kind of delivery method, SFTP or anything, to any server, once the file was generated through file connector, or do I need to use VFS? Do you server? mean to send it to SFTP uh -huh. server or anything? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, you yeah, can. Cu currently, we use extensively VFS, and I, I realize now per perhaps we are not using the optimized way. We generate the file separately and then do a VFS to transport the file. But it seems that we could do yes, it in a single sequence. Yes, you can. Yes, just okay. easily do okay. that. Uh, so file connector can do that. We are not yes. using. Okay. Yes, we Thank can you. easily do that. So I have a question about the uh, ESB project. So one thing I was wondering is how would you handle uh, environment-specific properties or contexts? Let's say you had a test environment and a production environment, and you wanted to call different backend URLs. Yeah. Uh, how do you avoid embedding the URL in the ESP project? Yeah. So when we are developing ESP configuration projects, so if you have a different kind of environments, so what ideally we should do is we shouldn't put any configuration that is related to environments in the ESP project. So we we can, we have something called the registry. So in the registry, you can store whatever the stuff related to environment, like endpoint URLs and other, other scripts or any kind of environment specific stuff. So that has to be externalized to the registry. So the ESB configuration should contain a placeholder to refer to those environment specific variables. So that's how we achieve that requirement. Would you be able to deploy that as a carbon application yes, as well? Yes, okay. yeah, of course. Thank you. Any? Sorry. Ah. So yeah. How do we do the version controlling for these car carbon applications? Versioning of carbon applications. Okay. So, uh, so versioning of carbon application is already there. Like you can define the version of different car carbon applications. So, but there's one limitation in the artifact level. So, in the artifact level, we don't support any kind of versioning. So if you need to maintain two different versions of the same artifact at the moment, the only way you can do it to have two different names, or maybe you can append a prefix or postfix for the particular artifact. That's the only way we can have versioning in these artifacts. One more follow-up question to the migration part. You mentioned yes. that we can specify that in registry. Yes. That means every time we move that to a test environment, we have to alter the registry to change the entry according to the test environment? Okay, it's like this. So, uh, so the, all the configurations 
should be similar in all environment. I mean, the, all the artifact you are de developing here should be same because that's what you are pushing from environment to environment. Mm -hmm. The environment specific stuff has to be defined uh, in a uh, application which is specific to that environment. Okay. Okay. So, you will have a single uh, registry. Uh, uh, so, let's say you have a dedicated car file representing all the environment specific stuff for the test environment as a separate car file. You should have a, another one for prod and another one for dev. So, likewise, there should be an environment specific car file for registry artifacts. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Any more questions? Um, when you are uh, scheduling a task kind of thing, like you showed uh, the task, like uh, the process uh, service has to run at a certain uh, time. Uh, sorry, could, uh, you, speak could you speak a bit loud, please? Um, the task that you have yes. showed, like uh, the process, uh, yes. the service need to run at a specific time. Yes. So if it if the code is deployed as a clusters, different uh, the same piece of code deployed as different nodes in a cluster, mm -hmm. how can we make sure that it's run only once? Yeah. So um, yeah. So the question was uh, so in the scheduled task or the task uh, feature, how in the clustered environment, how we can make sure it runs only in one node? So, we have built in coordination feature for that. So, by using the coordination feature, it's simple configuration to enable coordination. So, then it will take care of uh, running it either on one node or maybe you can run it on all nodes. So, that is configurable. Can we um, have configurations outside the car file? Uh, so, for example, a SOAP endpoint has some username and password that needs to be passed. Mm -hmm. Six months later, the SOAP system, they've updated their passwords, we need to change it. Instead of me deploying the car with an updated username and password, is there something that I could configure at the carbon level so that the car file doesn't change, but my configurable parameters can change? Okay, so you can either make it system properties or else uh, you can uh, you can even uh, have it in the registry as well. So, but registry, registry you can either use car files to deploy registry artifact or you can simply upload some uh, registry without a car file. So, that is possible too. So, there are different ways of doing uh, externalization. So, it's possible. So the registry, doesn't it get uh, refreshed when you restart your service? No, it doesn't refresh. So okay. those are permanent values. Okay. 